can't believe I'm going down this. This is so sketchy. Whether you're into gas bikes, electrics, or a traditional pedalist, you've got to try a fat tire bike. Up until about a week ago, I had no idea what I was missing until I got my first fat tire bike. And these things are absolutely amazing. I've been riding standard gas-powered mountain bikes for years, and up until now I would never attempted to try and put a gas motor on a fat bike because I didn't want to have to deal with offset motor mounts or jack shafts with shifter kits. It just seemed too complicated and finicky. However, after trying a fat e-bike for the first time, it's something I'm certainly going to try to make work. So look forward to that in the future, but for now, we'll focus on what we have at hand and why this thing opened a door of possibilities that I never realized existed. This is the Orion from WTVA Bikes. It's a folding fat tire e-bike with 20 inch tires that are fun to whip around, a 13 amp hour battery with 48 volts, and a 750 watt geared hub motor that has more than enough power to pull me through most sketchy situations. So although this video is going to be our first impressions of this particular bike, it's mostly going to focus on why these fat tire bikes are so amazing in my opinion. Four-inch tires are being pushed to their limits on this gravel. This is something that wouldn't even be good to drive over. Yeah, I would never. There's no other bike I own that I would take through that. It has to be a fat tire. I am sold on fat tire bikes. Fifty-four point six volt, two amp output. And it's raining. Uh, I'm gonna have to look at the instructions, aren't I? Well, in my defense, I did attempt to look at the instructions. These are the instructions. So it looks like, uh, looks like we're figuring this out on our own. So I assume these need to be loose. This goes with the bevel ended down. This goes on here. And that still doesn't feel right because there's a big old gap. I'm very confused. Oh, this is weird, man. That cat is chilling. Yeah, that feels just about right. 
minimum marks right there so you got all this should be good for tall and short people here's hoping oh i like that oh i really like that all right now this is kind of cool this is something i wouldn't mind having for my regular bikes assuming the quality holds up over time <laughs> nice that is a pretty good looking bike those tires just make it look so mean As with most bikes that come shipped to your house these days, there's really not much to putting them together. It's usually just the front wheel and the handlebars, as was the case with this setup. But this being a folding bike with a unique stem, I was a little bit confused trying to put it together. And the instructions didn't help because, well, it didn't cover it at all. So I used my years of bike ingenuity to figure it out and turns out it was a lot simpler than I thought, just deceptive because the tall adjustable stem looked a bit confusing at first all right so both the front and back brakes are squeaky i didn't have time to line up the calipers with the rotor but i gotta go to work i'll do that tomorrow but i know it's the pads because when i squeeze the levers it goes away so let's go ahead and cover our first impressions of the orion from wtva and then talk about fat tire bikes in general along with their future on the channel Disclaimer first, WTVA did send us this bike for free so we could do some testing and review of the bike. This is not going to affect our opinion of the bike, and as you know if you've seen our previous electric vehicle videos, we don't pull any punches, not even with the nitpicks. But I do try to be fair and honest to both the viewer and the manufacturer. Starting out with where I think the Orion could be improved, because I like to end on a high note, let's talk about some of the negatives. First, obviously, it's an electric bike, so they're expensive. Can't really do much about this because batteries and motors are expensive on top of a bike that's already pretty complex. Which has led me to believe that perhaps I was a bit unfair when reviewing the KBO Breeze. Now, price is relative to everyone, and I haven't done great research on folding fat tire e-bikes, so you can judge for yourself if the price is worth the specifications on this particular model. Small gripes first, there was a little bit of shipping damage, which is just something you deal with these days when dealing with FedEx in particular. A little bit of scratching near the logo, and the front rotor was bent. The rotor was easy to fix, and I really don't care about scratches, because the way I ride my bike, it's going to end up that way anyways. I also noticed a slight amount of rust on the fork stem, which is not a big deal in my opinion, had this been anything other than an electric bike, but rust does mean moisture, and moisture does mean potential water damage. Which brings us into one of our biggest complaints about the bike, is lack of water resistance. Now you guys know me and where I have to ride bikes. Things are gonna get wet and a little bumpy. Needless to say, I've already been dancing with this bike's potential electrical failure with the way I ride it, but we're going to take some measures to reduce the possibility of killing this bike. Obviously, with all of my electrical vehicles, I make no attempts to submerge them. However, one of the critical components of this vehicle, the controller, is mounted in an extremely vulnerable position. Not only can water drain down the battery if you're getting rained on and seep into this compartment, but it can also flick up through a hole in the side of the compartment and there's no drainage as far as I can tell. There's nothing underneath this to allow water to drain. So if moisture gets in here, it's staying in there until it evaporates. And I can only hope that the controller itself has some form of waterproofing on it. I'll be taking measures into my own hand to fix this by sealing this compartment the best as I can, both from the top, the side, and this hole on the back, adding a rubber grommet and some sealant. Obviously, if the controller is waterproof, then I'm worried about nothing, but I doubt that it is, and I would have loved to seen this compartment, especially being so low and exposed, sealed from the factory. With all that being said, because this will be so easy to fix myself, I'm not knocking them too many points for this issue. So far, that's my only major concern on this bike. Other than that, it's pretty nice. So far has been a tank, and the build quality looks good. 
Not quite as good as the Breeze, but it is a little bit cheaper. A few more small complaints before moving on to the positives. The throttle is really wonky. Now there's a lot of good things about this throttle, but it has about a half second delay, not only when you activate it, but when you make adjustments, causing it to be really jerky and unresponsive at times. There is no auxiliary USB charging on the battery or the bike, at least as far as I can find, which is kind of a disappointment even though I hardly ever use it except for some LED light strips, it would be nice to be able to charge your phone, camera, or LED lights from this gigantic battery. And lastly, the front headlight is really weak. You can use it in about the second pedal assist mode, going up to 12 miles an hour, but beyond that, I don't trust it to see where I'm going before I run into something. Moving on to our positives, let's flip right back to that headlight. There is a disconnect here, so you could easily add one of your own to improve its performance. The rear tail light is fairly bright for what it's meant to do and does have a brake light setting. The geometry of the bike, along with its generous adjustability, allows tall and short riders to comfortably ride it. My girl, who's about five and a half feet, can ride it with ease, and I'm six foot four and I have no problems. Now when reviewing products, I tend to only focus on things that affect me and things that I'll use, so in this video I won't be covering the folding feature of the bike, but obviously it's a folding bike that tends to compact down pretty tight. And when riding the bike, even in sketchy situations, no time do I ever feel like something's going to break or just fall apart. It's a sturdy build. Not only does the removable battery lock in and out of the bike, it also has an ignition system on the battery itself, meaning that if you turn it off and remove the key, the bike will be unpowered until the key is reinserted. When in the on position, the key is locked into the battery, so you don't have to worry about losing it while you're out on the trail. And the bike does come with two keys. In one area where WTVA got it right that KBO was annoying about is the fact that you can use the throttle while the pedal assist is turned off. And this is really handy when you're in low speed sketchy situations trying to maneuver your way through boggy areas. You can pedal and apply throttle without worrying about the bike trying to jump you up to a predetermined pedal assist speed. Thank you for doing this WTVA, they should all be like this. And this might seem like a small feature, but the lowest pedal assist mode of 6 miles an hour is actually perfect when I'm walking Henry, which makes this really convenient for dog walkers. At all times, full power is always available to the throttle no matter what pedal assist level you're in, including zero, and this is convenient because if you're cruising around slowly and suddenly need to power out of a situation, it's right there on the right grip, and you don't have to mess with the readout. Having ridden scooters and bikes with power ranges from 360 watts up to 2000 watts, I find that this 750 watt motor is a real sweet spot. These geared hub motors have a lot of low end torque and still reach a decent top speed. So I really like the fact that they use the 750 instead of a cheaper 500 watt motor. Especially since I currently weigh 210 pounds and when I go to work, I'll have a backpack full of food and supplies. On paper, it claims to have a range of over 40 miles per charge. We will test this because I am skeptical, but that's going to be in the future after we've cycled the battery over a dozen times. Something I never gave much thought to before was the smaller diameter tires used on these fat tire folding bikes, between 20 and 24 inches. These are a lot more fun to whip around and generally just allow you to enjoy riding the bike even more, without losing stability. Unfortunately, there is no P setting I could find that would allow me to adjust the speed of each individual pedal assist mode. However, I found the preset options were nearly perfect, but beyond level 3, you won't really be doing any pedaling, as Cadence tends to top out at level 3 in gear 7. And I do like the fact that they limit the amount of amperage given to the pedal assist modes. This is going to help save your battery in the long run, and the fact that full power is always available on the throttle means you're not really losing anything here. However, you can go into the P settings and adjust the amount of power given to the pedal assist if you desire. I might be a bit unique when it comes to the kind of bikes I like, but personally I love the look of this bike. And I've even had several compliments from co-workers and just random people when walking Henry. It's a sleek look with the black color scheme, the magnesium rims with the big knobby tires really top it off, and the simple design of this folding e-bike is something that, just to me, I really enjoy. It's unique if nothing else. 
The combination of these big cushy tires along with the generous adjustments given to you means that this is an incredibly comfortable bike. As a matter of fact, this is so far the most comfortable bike I can ever remember riding. I'm going to top it off one step further by putting my Zacro seat on it and possibly even a suspension seat post. I don't think you can get much better than that unless you already have a full suspension fat tire bike. The upright handlebars allow you to relax your shoulders and back while for some reason still feeling like you can conquer the trails without feeling like you're on a bulky cruiser, which probably has a lot to do with the giant tires to be honest. Those are our first impressions of the Orion in a nutshell. Let's talk about fat tire bikes in general and what I've noticed so far. On these 4 inch tires, anytime you go off the pavement, you really do feel like you're floating. It's almost unnoticeable that you're not on the road. Little rocks, bumps, and other obstacles that you would normally worry about or avoid are things you just cruise over with ease. You don't have to worry so much about what line you choose. These fat knobby tires allowed me to take this bike, which is certainly not designed for off-roading, onto a road which I have never even attempted on any of my other bikes. They just make it so cushy. I won't say it was a smooth experience, but it was certainly enjoyable and I'm willing to do it over and over again. If your personality has even a small level of adventurous attitude, I would highly recommend considering a fat tire bike if you are looking at e-bikes. Now I'll do my best to put a gas motor on a fat bike in the future, but this is an option which is just plug and play. Even if you find yourself in a situation such as living in a city where you don't have any practical trails to get to, fat tires will be more confident on the road. They handle gravel, sand, and other loose debris a lot better than most road tires ever will. So safety is something that will definitely come with fat tires over normal street tires. Oddly enough, something this bike has pushed me to do more than any other bike or scooter on the channel is leave a lot earlier when I'm going to work, simply because I want to ride it. This thing is an absolute blast. Those tires are amazing. I find myself always looking for interesting little ways to get to work and to get back home, simply because I want to ride the bike more. So in a few months, we'll have an update on this bike along with a range test. So far, the Orion gets a thumbs up from me, especially considering that the price level, as far as e-bikes are concerned, is not outrageous. And the small nitpicks I have about it, even the waterproofing issue, are things that I can solve myself. I hope you guys got some useful information out of today's video, or at the very least, were mildly entertained. And until next time, ride safe.